Dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining Cyber Polygon. We are gathering online for the second consecutive year to talk about the opportunities and challenges that technological progress brings. Cybersecurity remains one of the most important topics on the global agenda. Our world has changed and we are adapting to it. We are spending more time on the internet. Companies are moving their services online. And this changes the way the world operates. Ecosystems have become a new trend for businesses and countries and around us almost everywhere. Their resilience will define the safety of our future for years to come. I would like to introduce our first prominent guest and distinguished speaker, the Prime Minister of the Russian Federation, Mr. Mikhail Mishustin. He is a politician who appreciates the potential of innovation and the importance of technological breakthroughs for the well-being of our country. It is a great honor that he is opening our conference for the second year in a row. Prime Minister, it is my privilege to welcome you here today. Dear colleagues and friends, I am delighted to welcome you to the international online cyber security training. It has now been four years since this unique event started bringing together millions of viewers from around the world. It attracts attendance of recognized experts and high professionals, as well as leaders of global corporations and international organizations, representatives of IT giants such as IBM and Microsoft, experts from Kaspersky Lab, Rostelecom, Azon, and other known companies. And of course, Russian and international banks are also here. This year marks the 60th anniversary of the first manned space flight. At some point, we will also be joined by cosmonauts from the International Space Station. Over the years, this industry has gone through significant change. This issue of cyber uh, security is becoming a priority. Spacecraft and ground stations require protection from possible attacks as well as secure data communications uh, between space and ground control facilities. The representative list of participants confirms that the issues discussed uh, at Cyber Polygon are truly important. Addressing cyber threats and securing common digital future are within priorities of every government and company. At the age of digital transformation, this requires developing a constructive dialogue as well as sharing of knowledge and experience. Thus, uh, jointly creating conditions for the sustainable development of countries and business. Last year brought tremendous changes. It has reshaped the lives of the majority of people. Working out of home has become common. Online services are developed and introduced at acceleration speed. People are spending more and more time online. In this new reality, governments and businesses are focusing on improving life and work environment. Increasing digitalization shortens customer delivery time for most advanced ideas. By the end of 2023, digital transformation will affect 40% of the Russian economy and around 650 companies. At the President's instruction within the next two and a half years, all socially significant government and municipal services will be transformed into user-friendly and client-centric digital format. Federal agencies are already upgrading their data infrastructure to make this happen. Regions are also getting involved. 
One of the biggest tasks for the government is eliminating digital inequality. In today's world, free access to the internet, availability of uh, a wide range of information resources, communication via social media and online shopping are important criteria uh, when it comes to the quality of life. We are working hard to achieve full internet penetration in Russia, including the most remote areas. It is planned to accomplish this by 2030. Over a thousand internet access base stations will be installed in all small towns before the end of this year. Their residents are looking forward to this with great anticipation. The internet is not only a source of information, but also a source of more employment opportunities. The number of remote jobs is already growing. Telework is becoming more popular. The digital industry is changing the job market and uh, other sectors of the economy. Artificial intelligence, machine learning and the Internet of Things are extensively uh, implemented in manufacturing, transport infrastructure, healthcare facilities, government bodies in various uh, science-intensive industries. Augmented reality and machine learning are transforming industrial production and energy sector, creating more environmentally friendly development prospects. Artificial intelligence accelerates research, enabling uh, faster development of new medical drugs. Expedited development of COVID-19 vaccines uh, would have been impossible without modern technology. Technical vision contributes uh, to space exploration and protecting our planet from disasters. Digital ecosystems are a new stage of industrial evolution. They help consolidate partners, manufacturers and suppliers and function as one organism. Countries and major businesses are building digital ecosystems to boost the effectiveness of various services. Some of these networks have millions of clients. The number of companies inside an ecosystem may reach several hundred. This growing interconnectivity brings cybersecurity of organizations and their clients to the fore. Uh, the World Economic Forum has named cyber attacks on critical uh, data infrastructure one of the global technological risks of this year. Attacks on supply chains have become uh, more frequent in the past years, and this alarming trend persists. The first quarter of 2021 accounts for 51.6% more cyber crimes than the year before. Criminal activity across the entire IT industry has grown by 33.7%. Higher security requires understanding existing risks and taking an intelligent approach to cyber security strategies. We must use the best industry practices, including those of our foreign partners, and find working solutions together. Cybercrime and hacking are global threats that uh, can only be prevented by efforts of the entire international community. In March 2021, 193 members of the United Nations upheld uh, a report of the open-ended working group on uh, developments in the field of information and telecommunications in the context of international security. The working group was established at Russia's initiative. For many years, our country has called for a common mechanism of taking cyber threats in the world. Intensive support for this approach indicates that most countries are ready to work together to solve issues of global cyber stability. This opens wider prospects for further cooperation. Colleagues, today you are discussing truly uh, important issues. I am confident that your ideas and proposals will help solve many problems currently faced by governments and businesses. Together, 
we can map a safe course of digital development for the humankind for years ahead. I wish you engaging discussions and productive communication. Dear audience, let me introduce our next distinguished guest, whom we are honored to have for his welcoming remarks. The founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, Professor Klaus Schwab. The World Economic Forum has been actively supporting cyber polygons since the beginning. Professor Schwab, the floor is yours. Your Excellency, Mr. Prime Minister, Mr. Hermann Graf, dear participants, it's a great privilege to address you for the second year in a row here at the Cyber Polygon. We have come together today to discuss how we can develop secure digital ecosystems and protect companies, but also societies, from cyber attacks. We must do so with a broader mission in mind, to improve the state of our digital world by enhancing, on the one hand, global cooperation, but also public-private cooperation. I'm pleased that we are joined today by Prime Minister Mijustin. Dear Prime Minister, global and public-private cooperation is really critical to addressing our shared cyber security challenges. We are grateful for the long cooperation which the World Economic Forum has established with the Russian Federation both with government, but also with the business community. I wish to thank particularly Hermann Graf, CEO and Chairman of the Executive Board of Sparebank, and a committed partner of the World Economic Forum, and actually a member of its Board of Trustees, and a co-founder of the Center for Cybersecurity. We greatly, Hermann, appreciate your leadership in championing cybersecurity across the financial system and across the world. Allow me now to reflect on today's theme, which is to develop secure digital ecosystems. It is remarkable how quickly this goal has become so important around the world. Three years ago, we initiated our Center for Cybersecurity at the World Economic Forum. We recognized, already then, the crucial importance of cybersecurity as a global issue and as a corporate challenge. We did not expect, however, that digital connectivity and cybersecurity would come to support and influence every aspect of our business and social lives, as it has done, particularly in the past year. Digital connections are embedded in our homes, our workplaces, and through operational technology, our critical infrastructure. This connectivity has allowed us to realize incredible efficiency, even in a world where we worked remotely. It is not an overstatement to say that it has enabled us to continue to function during a time of unprecedented crisis. Technology has been central to the way we have collectively managed the COVID-19 pandemic and the global crisis. Digital infrastructure made it possible to deliver essential services. It helped business to run and it helped us to maintain contact with each other. Digitalization has us helped to solve some of the major hurdles put in place by the pandemic. But it has also opened us up to new challenges. One of the most important among them is how to ensure digital technologies and communications are safe, secure, 
and trustworthy. Many technology leaders have noted that within a few short months, we have achieved advances in digital transformation that might otherwise have taken years. But this digital dividend of the COVID pandemic is fragile. Cyber incidents can undermine the trust in key online services and they could derail adoption of socially valuable innovations. The World Economic Forum's Global Risk Report includes cybersecurity failure and IT infrastructure breakdowns in its top 10 risks, both by likelihood and by impact. The implication is clear. A lack of cybersecurity has become a clear and immediate danger to our society worldwide. We have seen in the past few months, for example, ransomware attacks targeting hospitals, critical infrastructure, school systems, the power grid, and many other essential services. Citizens are feeling the repercussions of cyber attacks directly. Citizens are impacted by energy shortages, delayed medical treatment, and other effects this new breed of a dash of cyber attacks causes. This is not a problem that is easily solved. Ransomware attacks are complex and criminal enterprises are increasing their scale and impact. This highlights the need for a structured, multi-stakeholder, multilateral approach to secure our society against some. In this, we must all work together. Governments are in charge of guaranteeing security, but the deep expertise that is needed to develop a secure cyber ecosystem often lies with the private sector. Similarly, just as governments are often pooling the resources which each other through international organizations such as Interpol to fight physical crime, we need more similar collaboration between governments and I should add private business to fight cybercrime. The good news is that such public-private collaboration efforts already exist as we demonstrate today. Recognizing the need to mobilize a global response to the growing cyber threats, the World Economic Forum launched the Center for Cybersecurity, as I mentioned, in 2018. Our center provides an independent and impartial platform to foster collaboration between all members of the global cybersecurity community, both in the public and in the private sectors. Sparebank, together with other companies from around the world, is a founding member and actively involved in our initiatives aimed at addressing systemic cybersecurity challenges and finally to restore and to improve digital trust. During the pandemic, the paradigm shift to a digital way of life has made the role of cybersecurity as a global public good even more pronounced. Good cybersecurity enables business continuity at a time when a single point of failure in only one organization can become a systemic calamity with repercussions for the whole society. As our digital landscape expands along with our dependence on it, we need to continuously reconsider and refine our expectations of cybersecurity. Going forward, 
It must now be one of the first thoughts and priorities that any organization has. It is one of the foundations of business sustainability and continuity in the future. And it is becoming an important part of every organization's brand and reputation. In this era and in the future, cybersecurity will be the foundation for trustworthy technologies and businesses to help the economy to bounce back from the COVID-19 crisis, governments, enterprises, but also small business will continue to need innovative ways to build and give access to services. In many cases, this means further connecting services and data, creating completely new digital and expanded digital ecosystems. This demands an understanding of cyber risks these new systems will face and proactive efforts to build those systems with security by design principles in mind. In the early stages of the pandemic, we saw the adoption of large-scale working from home arrangements, cloud services and video conferencing. This seemed transformational at the time, only a few short moments ago. But today we are witnessing the proliferation of even more ambitious initiatives. So is, for example, the EU proposed digital law that aims to provide a safe way for citizens to access and link public and private services online. If new services are to be adopted at the speed necessary for long-term sustained economic recovery, citizens must be able to trust that the technologies are secure and that their assets and personal information and data are protected. The principle of trust, therefore, will be absolutely necessary. Finally, one of the lessons of the COVID-19 pandemic is also the notion of resilience. We have to protect ourselves not only against the virus, we also have to develop the ability to withstand a virus attack. In other words, masks are not sufficient. We need vaccines to immunize ourselves. The same is true for cyber attacks. Here too, we have to move from simple protection to immunization. We need to build IT infrastructures that have digital antibodies built in inherently to protect themselves. In conclusion, I would like to state again how essential it is to see the high number of leaders that join the cyber polygon this year. During the course of today, we will test how to work together across organizations, across borders and across the public and private sector. This is a significant step in preparing for an even more highly connected and I hope a highly secure and trusted future. I wish you every success.